These days, it can seem like scientists and researchers are making mind-blowing discoveries each and every minute. From the outer reaches of space to our long-forgotten past, we are only starting to scratch the surface of what we can potentially uncover. So today, here at Unexplained Mysteries, we'll be taking a look at these recent discoveries. Physicist claims alien messages may be hidden in the stars. Everyone has at some point wondered about the possibility of life outside of Earth. It is nearly impossible not to when gazing into the empty, never-ending space above us, counting the stars. With space being so vast and seemingly endless, many wonder how or why we have not yet contacted extraterrestrial life. This phenomenon has been named the Fermi Paradox. The Fermi Paradox refers to the confusing contradiction between the complete lack of evidence for extraterrestrial life and the seemingly high probability of their existence. Some scientists believe they have the solution to explain why we have not made any contact with aliens. Terry Rudolph, a quantum physicist at the Imperial College London, suggests that aliens have been attempting to communicate with us through the stars themselves. Rudolph speculates that if aliens were to communicate vast distances, they would likely attempt to do so in more subtle ways, as to direct any communication to one planet without interference from other extraterrestrial life. As a result, a possible method of communication would be through the stars. He further explains his hypothesis by stating that aliens could potentially manipulate the photons inside individual stars to alter the light emitted from them. This fluctuation in the light of a star could be translated if we could uncover the code. Rudolph postulates, photons can propagate billions of light years and retain significant quantum coherence. This makes stars a reliable resource for communication and allows for messages to be sent across extremely long distances without disturbance. He believes that this method of communication could be appealing to an alien population if they are aware of other alien populations that pose a threat. So how can we translate these messages? As an extensively educated physicist, Rudolf feels confident in the possibility of this theory. However, he does not claim that aliens are communicating in this manner, rather that it is possible. If his theory were true, it still leaves one crucial issue. We have no way of translating messages in the stars. If aliens were utilizing this method, they would need to provide us with some form of a decoder to allow us to understand any of their messages. Until then, Surely, it remains a mystery. Saturn's rings reveal slushy core One word that is rarely used to describe objects in the Milky Way is slushy. But that is exactly the word scientists are using to describe Saturn's core following a study of its rings. The recently conducted study attempted to provide a description of the massive ringed planet's core, which they were surprised to discover takes up an astonishing 60% of the planet. Researchers involved with the study used the subtle, barely noticeable waves in the rings surrounding Saturn to reveal what lies below the outer layer of the planet. And what they discovered was that it seems to be made up of a slushy blend of ice, rock and gas, blurring at the edges and taking up most of the interior of the planet. This size and composition were complete surprises to the authors of the study, which was published in the Nature Astronomy Journal. Chris Mankovich, one of the authors, described the discovery as huge. It's definitely not something we expected to find. Indeed, it seems that this surprising revelation may change everything for how scientists view the enormous planet, which has long been closely studied for its unique characteristics and its oddly uniform magnetic field. So if you cannot drill an enormous hole through the outer layer of the crust, how exactly did scientists know what lay at the core of Saturn? It turns out that they carefully studied the interesting rings of the planet, which are made up of ice and rock bound in space by the previously mentioned uniform magnetic field emitted by Saturn. Although largely constant, the rings do exhibit barely perceptible ripples that give away what is going on inside the core. Previously, scientists believed that the core was a hugely compact mass of solid materials such as rock and iron, but the new study shows that it is instead a slushy mass that is sloshing and pulsing with the amount of mass equal to 17 Earths, and this is what is complicating matters for scientists. 
With such a surprising jumble of materials instead of a solid core, the scientists and astronomers interested in the formation of Saturn now must figure out how Saturn managed to grow out of the collection and how it manages to emit such a strange magnetic field of which there is no ready explanation. Mankiewicz spoke on the complexity of the matter, saying that a can of worms with Saturn is explaining the observations with Saturn's magnetic field, which is a fairly bizarre magnetic field for many reasons. This is a non-standard picture for the interior structure of the planet. And although many questions were generated by this study, the findings were more than two decades and billions of dollars worth of research in the making, so it is unlikely that definitive answers will be forthcoming anytime soon. For now, scientists must simply continue to study and learn from the vast expanse of space that stretches almost incomprehensibly beyond us. Artifacts Emerging from Melting Glaciers The rapid melting glaciers across the world due to warming temperatures is not new information and is undoubtedly a point of concern for the future of our planet. However, there is one bright spot amidst the gloom and that is the fact that the melting glaciers are providing a valuable opportunity for archaeologists to learn about the past. As the glaciers recede, the melting ice is uncovering secrets that they have kept for thousands of years in the form of historical artifacts and fossils that remained hidden below the permanent ice. In fact, so many of these artifacts have been found that an entire field of research dubbed glacier archaeology has emerged. The rapid melting of the glaciers has produced unbelievable opportunities for learning about and understanding the lives of the historic people that lived centuries before us, opportunities which likely would not have availed themselves otherwise. In one such instance, the retreating levels of an alpine glacier, the Bruniferm Glacier in the eastern Swiss Alps, has revealed evidence of an ancient climb by hunters and gatherers in the Mesolithic era almost 10,000 years ago. It seems that the people were risking the treacherous climb to reach a vein in the mountains filled with crystals and other precious rocks that they used to fashion sharp tools used in their daily lives and hunts. This is an important discovery because archaeologists have long believed that prehistoric people tended to make their homes away from menacing mountain ranges like the Alps due to the lack of artifacts present on the slopes. However, the melting glaciers have proven that the artifacts have been plentifully there all along just buried under several feet of glacial ice. Studies of these artifacts have led historians and archaeologists to conclude that prehistoric humans were much more active in the mountains than previously believed. Many researchers theorize that they were likely hiking these treacherous distances to reach fertile but distant valleys, hunt or even use the land as pasture land as they became more sedentary. As evidenced by the artifacts found indicating that a group of humans had hiked over 3,000 meters high into the mountains to search for crystals, we know that they were also willing to risk the danger in order to search for the plentiful raw materials that the mountains could provide. The first finding that disproved the theory that early humans stayed away from the mountains was the discovery of a well-preserved body of a 5,300-year-old warrior in an alpine glacier. And although researchers initially believed that he may have been the exception and not the rule, a subsequent boon of artifacts has laid that line of reasoning to rest. Among the finds scattered throughout the retreating glaciers of the Alps has been a birch bark quiver, leather trousers and shoes, string and hundreds of other tools made from organic materials that have been preserved in the ice. However, there is a short window of time to find these artifacts once the ice retreats, as the organic materials dating back thousands of years will rapidly deteriorate when removed from the ice and exposed to the elements. Although the shrinking glaciers due to rising temperatures is undoubtedly a matter of grave concern, anthropologists and archaeologists are jumping at this rare opportunity to learn more about those humans that came before us. AI works better when it copies the human brain. Artificial intelligence is being deployed to be even better and faster than the human brain could possibly be, and it has already taken the place of several roles in society that humans used to fill, as well as advancing our capabilities further than we would have initially thought possible. However, scientists working on developing different types of artificial intelligence have made an interesting discovery the networks and systems of AI work better when they are modelled after our own human brains. 
Whereas many AI developers looked to complex supercomputer components when it came to the creation of their systems, researchers with Montreal Neurological Institute Hospital and Quebec Artificial Intelligence Institute recently took a different approach, and with surprising results. The team crafted an artificial intelligence system called an Artificial Neural Network, or ANN, that attempted to model the neural connections found in the human brain. Once this was accomplished, they found that the ANN system of artificial intelligence was able to perform memory tasks more efficiently and with more flexibility than the previously standard computerized versions of artificial intelligence. Not only does this discovery help to further the development of more effective AI systems, it also provides valuable information to neuroscientists and those seeking to better understand just how our brain works especially when it comes to certain previously mysterious wirings that allow us to perform specialized cognitive tasks. The collaboration of the two camps, the Neurological Institute and the Artificial Intelligence Institute, for the purposes of such a groundbreaking project truly speaks to the potential of the discovery for the common ground of both fields of science. Bratislav Misik, a researcher for the project and senior author for the corresponding paper, which was published in Nature Machine Intelligence, said that the project unifies two vibrant and fast-paced scientific disciplines. Neuroscience and AI share common roots but have recently diverged. Using artificial networks will help us to understand how brain structure supports brain function. In turn, using empirical data to make neural networks will reveal design principles for building better AI. The two will help inform each other and enrich our understanding of the brain. Although this study was groundbreaking for the fields of neuroscience and artificial intelligence alike, it is not the first time that human brains have been likened to computers in the interest of science. Researchers have long looked to the similarities between brains and technology in the search for revolutionary new treatments for brain disorders requiring repair such as traumatic brain disorders and strokes. One project explored the possibility of inserting synthetic microelectrodes into the brain tissue as a way to allow brain signaling to continue as normal. Although the project is still being heavily researched, it is hopeful that this new discovery of the link between artificial intelligence and biological brain functioning can help other projects such as this one advance significantly. Lab-grown mini-brains develop basic eyes that can see. The human brain is one of the most complex structures we know to exist. We have countless fields of study focusing on how it precisely works. From neuroscience to psychology, there are plenty of ways to begin looking into the human brain's psyche, chemical reactions and structures. One way that has made remarkable breakthroughs as of 2021 is lab-grown mini-organs. Lab-grown mini-organs are essentially a small-scale organ, similar to the human brain, that is made and observed in a laboratory setting. The aim here is to help understand the brain better, and it goes without saying just how valuable this field of research can be. Scientists can help us see the functional processes of the brain, test and trial treatments or drugs before administering them to humans, observe the effects of disease, or even see the development and growth processes. Scientists use induced pluripotent stem cells, known as IPSCs, to create these lab-grown organs, being referred to as brain organoids. Stem cells are the golden ticket of the body's cells. They are unspecialized, meaning they can be used to create any other cell in the body with specialized functions. This makes them incredibly valuable. To create the brain organoids, Skin cells obtained from adult donors are turned back into stem cells, making them generic and able to change or specialize. These stem cells are then put into a culture that aims to reflect the environment of a developing brain, allowing the stem cells to specialize into brain cells. The end product, when successfully done, is a small brain model. As of 2021, these brain organoids have progressed one impressive stage further. A research team at the University Hospital Dusseldorf have developed these same brain organoids, but they are now all set up with optic cups, the structures in human eyes where the optic nerve joins to the retina. In more simple terms, these brain models can see. The optic cups have successfully responded to light and have sent these messages to the brain. 
The team found that from 314 brain organoids, 72% were able to see from these optic cups, and they developed at a rate comparable to that of human embryos developing retinas. This opens up so many more possibilities as to what these brain organoids are able to tell us. Most significantly though, by no means exclusively, brain-eye interactions. Though concerns have been expressed, if such remarkable progress continues to be made, will this research and experimentation be ethical? Science, whether it is cultural, historical or biological, is continuing to advance. With every new discovery made, more doors are open for future research and theories along with many questions. But what do you make of these interesting discoveries? Be sure to let us know your thoughts in the comment section below and help us by growing this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.